heading to a service call down in Ogden, North Carolina. We've got a little bit of a rain shower moving through. Oddly enough, there was a 0% chance of rain today. It's obviously untrue. So I'm heading down and we have a unit that's not cooling. We're going to see what's going on. This is a Goodman package unit. We've actually worked on it before. We fixed that, we fixed that condenser leak in it several months ago. So we'll see. Here's our beast for today, Goodman package unit. About 15 years old, looks like. We worked on it before. There's a little train unit over there. We've repaired that one as well. And we installed the Mitsubishi mini split. If you can see it right over there. A couple years ago. So let's get to work and see what's wrong with this one. Alright, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to take my handy level here. Press the contactor, see what we got. We got the compressor, but not the fan motor. So we'll check the capacitor, and then we'll check the fan motor itself. I've already spun it one time, and you can be the judge. Let's take a look at it. Doesn't really spin very freely. Could be the motor itself is damaged. Let's check the capacitor. It looks like the motor needs to be replaced. As, well. as you see, guys, we have 4.8 microfarads on the fan side of the dual run capacitor. The capacitor is actually good. It'll be changed out anyway because I always change out a capacitor when I change out a fan motor. This fan motor is going to go bye bye. We have a replacement fan motor there. We're going to put a little bit of coil here on the shaft, then we'll take it off with the take the nut off with the service wrench. Hopefully, it'll come right up. It actually looks pretty clean, so hopefully, it's nice and easy, and we can quickly go to the next stage. some cases the wrench won't fit very well, like in this case, we'll use the adjustable wrench. Or in some cases where you've left your adjustable wrench somewhere else. <laughs> we'll just use the groove joint pliers. It's worked just fine. Look at that. If that was any easier, I'd be afraid. Okay, we'll move on to the next step. We'll take the motor loose from the uh, grate on top and replace it with a new motor. All right, guys, I have my new motor in there. You can see it mounted, the blade's mounted. Even though I got the blade off with a set of groove joint pliers, I really don't suggest putting it back on with those because you won't be able to tighten it enough. I was able to tighten it up by using the larger opening and my service wrench, slipping that down over it and then getting the smaller opening to fit across. So I was able to tighten it up, which is good because I really wouldn't trust using those pliers over there for the job. So now I'm about to get things wired back up. We can test it out, make sure she'll be working properly. We'll split it into two capacitors, one for the compressor and one for the fan, since this motor requires 10 microfarads. Okay guys, we have our version leads taken care of. We got them put into a PVC sleeve. All of our other wires are put down through here. Uh, I don't really need to ground this thing, but we're gonna go ahead and we'll ground it to one of the unit screws where the grill mounts. And inside these old Goodman units, there's a junction box, which you see right here with all this crap that comes out, splicing every wire and the whole stinking thing, it seems like. So we're gonna find our three wires that go back for the fan motor, tie into those, then run it back to L1 and L2 in the control cabinet. We only need two of them because we're gonna mount our capacitor back here uh, underneath in this area right here uh, up against where the return air plumb is at. Okay guys here's a quick look at what we did. We had originally three wires coming from the fan motor. We had our start, common, and run wire. They ran from the fan motor into this junction box. They were junction and went back into the control cabinet. We intercepted two of the wires here. One of the wires we did away with altogether. I took what used to be the fan start wire going to the capacitor and switched it to a run wire. Took the common, fed the common from this fan motor, and just head on back. L1 and L2 from the fan motor, that's the new one, going back to the control cabinet. Our capacitor is mounted out here. We have it mounted firmly with strap in the weather resistant section of the housing. And our two wires for the capacitor are tie strapped to the other wires going back up to the fan motor. So if you want to check the fan, 
motor capacitor, all you have to do is take this door off and it's right there. Now we'll look at the other ones. We have two more wires, the L1 and L2, coming up into the control cabinet here. Here is our new 40 microfarad capacitor. I don't know why I had an oval capacitor, but you know, whatever. So I knew I had to intercept one of them at the defrost board, so we took the common, which we had spliced in the control box to this purple wire, and then took it back to the contactor over here. The other wire opposite the common comes back over here to the capacitor. It's jumped through to the PTC. It is not bad, so we're not changing it. Uh, a lot of people have problems with the PTC. I'm one of them, but uh, if it's not broke, we're not going to take it out and we're not going to replace it. The other wire, it goes to the start for the compressor. You see the yellow one here, and there's another yellow wire going from the PTC. The PTC jumps from the run to the start, and whenever it heats up, it breaks that circuit. Uh, it breaks the compressor free on startup, and then immediately drops out. Uh, the issue with the PTC is it remains hot and it won't work the second time through. If, it, if it's needed again within a short period of time, it's still too hot to be used again. It has to cool down for there to be continuity through it. So we're going to start things up here in a second. We'll get the old I-manifold out and put the probes inside the plenum, which is really easy in the package unit. You can just throw the probes in there. So we'll do that and take a look at things and see how she looks. Guys, the unit has been running for just a few minutes. We'll let it settle out. Right now it's pretty much on target, but we don't know if that's where it's going to end up after several minutes. We'll let it run for a little while, see how she looks. There we are, running about two, just over two and a half tons. We have an eight degree split. That should increase as time goes by. So we'll let it run for a few minutes. We'll see how she does. Now there we are guys, our superheat's a little bit low, it's been fluctuating from 8 all the way up to 12 or 13 or so. Could be a little bit overcharged, looks like. Our head pressure's right on target, our suction pressure's a little high. Airflow is good, we have a good reading on airflow, let's check and see what it is. Airflow, well not fantastic, it's 300 and... 55 actual CFM per ton, which is a little bit low, but I really I can't get inside to see the filter. Uh, I have it on the maximum below we're setting, so we can't do too awful much about that today. We have the machine up and running, which is good, but still needs a little bit of fine tuning. The airspeed is low, but the suction pressure is high, which is a little strange. And our superheat flux voice, you see it's all the way down to 6.6, .6, but it comes all the way back up to 12 or 13. So we're definitely getting a good bit of cooling. Probably need to spend a little bit more time with this machine. It definitely needs a little bit of cleaning, uh, but that's for a person who actually will pay for cleaning. This person only pays when it's broken. <laughs> so they get the it's broken service, which we are done with. It's running. And I will see you guys on the next one.
if I weren't a worker That must rise with the sun